Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. In this video, I'm going to finish up the fretboard, start the next shape, and do a little detail work on the body. And as usual, I make a few mistakes. I guess I should call this video series, How Not to Make a Guitar. The best way to build a guitar is to write out a storyboard, outlining all the things you need to do and in what order to do them. Well, I didn't do that. I think I got cocky because I've had several successful builds in the past and I thought I knew what I was doing. Another mistake I've made a few times now is impatience. When I have the time to work on the guitar, I feel I need to do something, anything to make some progress. Sometimes you just need to wait so you don't get things out of order. With all that said, now that the fret markers are dry, I'm sanding them down with a radius sanding block to get them level with the fretboard. When I'm done, I can't even feel the markers because they are a perfect continuation of the wood. Here I'm fixing a few defects in the body. The dark striping in the maple is caused by a small beetle that eats its way into the wood and fungus causes the discoloration. I'm not worried about the small holes from the beetles, but there is a knot that I need to stabilize with epoxy. I'm taping off small beetle holes on the back side of the body just in case the little tunnels are connected to the small voids of the knot. I don't want epoxy running through the body and onto my workbench. I'm also creating a small dam using tape on the edge of the body near the knot so epoxy doesn't run over the side. The epoxy I use is very thin and can work its way into very small spaces. The epoxy takes about 24 hours to cure completely. So this is where impatience caused me some trouble. Because I was determined to do something, anything to make some progress, I decided to cut out the back profile of the neck. There's nothing wrong with the way I did it, but I did it in the wrong order. I should have had the full neck blank to cut the final shape of the fretboard. It's not a disastrous mistake, but it would have made things easier if I had done things in the proper order. Normally I would glue the fretboard on the neck before I do the final shaping. I can't do that on this guitar because of the finish I'm going to put on the neck and body. The neck and body are going to be a transparent blue, but the fretboard is going to stay as it is. So I need to cut the final shape of the fretboard first, and I start by cutting the rough shape out on the bandsaw. When I glue the fretboard on the neck after the color is applied to the neck and body, I need a way to ensure that it goes on perfectly. I do this by using small brad nails in the neck as alignment pins. After putting the brad nail into the neck, making sure that they don't interfere with a fret slot, and using my center lines drawn on the neck and the fretboard, I press the fretboard onto the neck, creating small holes that will keep the fretboard from sliding around during the gluing process. Once that is done, I use double stick tape to attach the fretboard. Then I route the fretboard to the dimensions of the neck. Because I already cut the back profile of the neck, I can't use the back of the neck as a solid base for routing. So I have to turn the neck over and run the fretboard along the table as I route. This is not the best way to do it, since the fretboard is radius and is no longer flat. It pays to think things out before you do them. However, it turned out fine and I continue on to my next mistake. So if you want to see the next series of mistakes and see if I can overcome the problems they cause, be sure and hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments on my ineptitude, please keep it civil, but I'd like to know what you think. Thanks for watching, and there you